Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. If you would, stand and join us for worship. Where do I go? Oh, when there's no one else to turn to, who do I talk to? When no one wants to listen, who do I lean on? When there's no foundation stable, I go to the rock, I know that's able, I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders reject. Run to the mountain, and the mountain stands by me. When the earth all around me is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. Oh, when I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. I hide oh, till the storms have all passed away. Where do I run to when the winds of sorrow threaten? Is there a refuge in the time of tribulation when my soul needs consolation? I go to the right. Go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. Run to the mountain, and the mountain stands by me. When the earth all around me is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. And when I need a shelter, when I need I go to the rock. Oh, I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders reject. I run to the mountain, and the mountain stands by me. Oh, the earth all around me is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Oh, when I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Let's sing verse 2 again. Oh, where do I hide? Oh, till the storms have all passed over, where do I run to? When the winds of sorrow threaten, is there a I go to the rock, I go to the rock of my salvation, I go to the stone, the builders reject, I run to the mountain, and the mountain stands by me, oh on the earth all around me sink and sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand, oh yes, when I need when I need a friend, I go to Sing it one more time. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. He stands by me. All the earth around me sink in sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Oh, when I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. When I need a shelter, oh, when I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Sing that one more time. Oh, when I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Aren't you thankful that you have somewhere you can run to today, amen? Amen, amen, amen. Well, God bless you. You may be seated just for a little bit. Uh, I want to do a couple of uh, preliminary stuff before we get back into worship. And uh, 
uh, and the announcements. Today, uh, I want to honor three people that I work hand-in-hand hand with on a daily basis that I could not do what I do if it wasn't for them. And so I want to honor them. Pastor Samantha, would you come up? Since you've got to get back to the kids' church, I'll go ahead and bring you up. Uh, this has been deemed Pastor Appreciation Day, and a pastor can only do so much. I can't be the nursery worker. I can't be the kids' pastor. I can't be the youth pastor. I can't be all the stuff. I can't do it all. Uh, by myself, and so I've got a great team uh, that the Lord has provided me with, and so Samantha is on that team. Samantha not only is our kids pastor, but she's the administrative assistant uh, in the church. She really keeps the church going, y'all. Uh, I'm just going to say that. Uh, she makes sure that things get where it needs to get to and how and all that stuff, and so I appreciate Pastor Samantha. Uh, I, I've I've talked several times with different people they've asked me about samantha number one i said if you take samantha you got to talk to me first mm -hmm. i had several pastor friends said well you're my friend i wouldn't do that to you i said you better be you, you know what you're talking about there <laughs> but i've talked about it if we ever got to the point where i had to have a full-time kids pastor i'd be torn whether to hire her or to hire somebody to be my full-time administrative assistant because she does so great of a job there that it would be it would be a big hole and so uh samantha i appreciate you so very much thank you for all that you do for the kingdom of god and here at win first assembly of god so we've got a little uh, yeah go ahead give her some love <laughs> so there's your air fryer she said she wanted an air fryer so guess what we got an air fryer and uh, and and you got to have something to fry. So I got you a gift card so you can buy groceries to fry. OK. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we just want to say thank you from the bottom of our heart. My wife and I, we definitely appreciate you in this church. I appreciate you. And so will y'all just show some love to pastors. Samantha again. <laughs> love you. Hey. Really, the biggest reward comes because she has to put up with Sadoff. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. Pastor Adam, come on up here real quick, buddy. I, uh, I appreciate our new youth pastor. He, uh, he has just come on board and has gotten busy. Got his, he's, listen, he's not afraid to get his hands dirty. Uh, mainly because before he got here, he was a mechanic and his hands were always dirty. And uh, he looks at me sometimes, he says, this is completely different than what I've done. You know, in the past, he'd clock in and clock out and knew what was going on. And so, but I want you to know, this guy here has just, he loves our kid, him and his wife, Heather. Because uh, really, the best part of our ministries are our wives. But uh, uh, he has really just got in there. He's loved on these kids. He has been with these kids. Um, if if he if they the kids were in the floor playing in the floor, you know where he would be. He would be sitting next to him. He wouldn't be in the floor because he couldn't get back up very quick. <laughs> You'd have to roll to get up. But uh, I I love this guy. He has brought a whole new dynamic to the office. And uh, I think in the last what almost four months, five months you've been here. I've probably left harder in the last five months than I've had in a long time. And, and that is, you got to have that. Because sometimes what we deal with on a day-to-day -day business is so serious, you know, and people are dying and people are sick and people are needing, needing help. And that's outside the, outside the church. And, uh, and so I, I appreciate Pastor Adam and, uh, and Sister Heather. And so, Pastor Adam, uh, this is just a little appreciation um, he didn't ask for an air fryer, and so I don't have an air fryer for you. You have one, because we left ours at the parsonage. He goes, hey, do you need this? My wife goes, no. Nah. And so they've got our air fryer, but now you have two. Okay. Wow. Maybe you can give mine back then. Oh, 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 it's an Instapot. Never mind, that's different. <laughs> but... I, I did find out that at Thanksgiving they're going to be heading to Branson, so I've got you two tickets to Silver Dollar City and a little bit of spending money here. And so, Pastor Adam, we appreciate you. We love you. Hey, uh, come over here. Love you, buddy. 
I was going to buy you a suit, but I know. He goes, I don't own a suit. And I said, well, you're going to have to get one because we do funerals every so often. So, uh, no, we, we pick on each other. Pastor Jonathan, uh, come on over. You can take the guitar off. I, I appreciate Pastor Jonathan extremely. He's been here with me on my staff longer than all the others. Uh, I'll, next month, believe it or not, my wife and I will celebrate four years as your pastor. And uh, it's gone like that. Really, it has. But in January, I believe it was January, we brought Jonathan on staff. And I don't know if you remember that period of time between November and January, I about killed myself. Uh, lead in worship and then coming immediately pray, uh, preaching because y'all know me I sing as hard as I preach and so I had several people look at me and say you're going to have to get someone that's going to have to maybe maybe hire a worship pastor that does youth and uh, but uh, I, I brought Pastor Jonathan on and that was before there was an amber and uh, but I appreciate Pastor Jonathan and his heart I don't know if there has been a staff member that I've had that has been more loyal to me than Jonathan. These others are. They just haven't been with me as long as, as Jonathan. But I, I appreciate loyalty. I hear horror stories from other pastors of their staff and how they talk behind the back of the pastor and they, they minimize the pastor's influence because of what they, but not Pastor Jonathan. I could trust Pastor Jonathan and if I, Ask him to do something he don't know how to do it. He'll research it and then try to get it done. And if he can't get it done, he'll just come up to me and say, listen, I just don't know if I can get this done. And we're like, okay, we'll figure a way to get it done. But uh, I appreciate you, Pastor Jonathan. It's no secret you like sports. It's no secret that he likes Houston. And so, Pastor Jonathan, I have bought you two tickets to watch the Grizzlies play the Houston Rockets uh, uh, in, in, in Houston. No, in Memphis. <laughs> And uh, uh, I'm not saying they're, they're on the court seats. They're, they're not that close because uh, I did put myself on a budget. But, uh, uh, but they're not all the way at the ceiling either, okay? They're somewhere in the middle. Uh, and then I've also got you a little bit of eating money there too because I know it costs money to eat in the arena. So take uh, your wife, I guess. I don't, yes, okay. And, uh, okay, so she likes sports too. But anyways, I love you and I appreciate you. Come on, get a picture. Y'all show some love. For Pastor Jonathan. Amen. Love you, buddy. All right, Pastor Adam, you're up. I'm back. Could have done me last, you know. <laughs> Stairs, why? All right. I would announce pastor appreciation potluck. That's kind of weird, but bring your good food at 5 o'clock. I'll be there. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Read the bulletin. Fields of Faith, uh, we're not having any church activities next week. We'll be, I guess, at the field at 630. Try to stick together probably. If we all love each other, we'll stick together. So. Kids outing to People's Farm is next Sunday. Uh, I don't know what time they're leaving. After church, fifteen dollars to go. Trunk or treat. Also, uh, if you're interested in ha doing trunk or treat, a booth that'd be great. Also, we still need candy or candy money or anything. Uh, also, different ways to, to tithe. You can text to give. You can use our website. You can mail it in. I don't own stamps, so that doesn't happen. Uh, do we own stamps? <laughs> Wouldn't know. Don't know. But that's all I got, so I guess stand and keep worshiping. <laughs>
never fails me in all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will see of the goodness of God cause all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so. Of the goodness of God. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. One more time, your goodness. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. And your goodness is running after. And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I have made Yes, God, I will see Of the, the goodness, goodness of God. God I will see And I will see Of, of the, the goodness, goodness of God See, when I think of this song, I, this song I love, when it shows up on the radio, it just, it, it, it gets to me. Because how many knows that the goodness of God, He's been so good to us. Even when we don't deserve it, He's been good to us. You know, I, I'll be talking with my kids and I will grievously say, the country that you're 
being raised in is not the country that I was raised in, which it wasn't the country that my parents was raised in. And it grieves us. But I say, however, we're still, because of the goodness of God, the greatest country that is on the face of the earth. I believe that with all my heart. Amen? Listen, what, what takes place in this country, the only way that it can be fixed is by the goodness of God. Y'all realize that? I love it. But when I think of this song, I, I think literally of what the psalmist was saying in Psalms chapter 23. He says, you prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. If that doesn't describe the goodness of God, I don't know what does. But then he follows it up with this. He says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. My friends, don't you realize the goodness of God is following after you? Everywhere you go. How many remembers the time you wasn't living for the Lord, and yet the goodness of God was still on your life? When you didn't deserve it. When it wasn't part of your heritage. It, 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 it wasn't. But yet God's so good and His mercy endures forever that He gave it to us anyways. He was wooing us to His throne room. And I'm so thankful for the goodness of God. So will you just take another 30 seconds, lift up your hands, and if God's been good to you this week, will you just love on your Father? And will you just, with your own words, will you just, come on, love on Him and tell Him how much you appreciate the goodness of God. Huh. I love you, Lord. I thank you for your goodness today. You've been so, so, so good. I can't repay you, oh God. I love you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. And I say like the psalmist says, Oh God, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'll sing about it. I'll preach about it. I'll talk about it. I'll live about it, Oh God. I'll daydream about it, Oh God. I just I love you and I appreciate what you do. I praise your name. I praise your name. I praise your holy name. Praise the Lamb of God. Church, before we're, we're seated for the Word, will you join your faith with mine? And let's touch heaven for some folks today. Will you pray for the, the Doyle Cooks, both senior and junior, that God will touch them, need a touch in their bodies today. Brother Alvin's not well this morning, and so Sister Linda's asked that we would pray for him. Uh, continue to pray for those that, uh, that are constantly... Uh, on our hearts, like Doug and Francis Smith, Brother West and Sister Cricket, uh, Brother Al Utley, many of the others that are not able to be here on a continual basis because of their physical need. But how many in this place has a need upon your heart just by an uplifted hand? Yeah, there's hands all over this place. Continue to remember Pauline Pierce, that God would touch her in a special way. Will you join your faith with mine and let's touch heaven? Father, we thank you that we serve a God that is not dead, but is alive, and that your throne room is available to us. Father, I pray that you would just come and move on our behalf. Father, we, in, we invoke the name of Jesus in our situations. There's power in that name. And so, Father, we come to that name that's above every name. That you would touch sickness, that you would touch poverty, that you would touch indebtedness, or that you would touch all these needs that we have in our lives, that you would mend the brokenhearted, that you would bridge a gap, oh God, that the, uh, between family members and that restoration could take place. Father, that you would do miracles upon miracles upon miracles for your people. We ask, Lord, that your healing touch would just touch those that are sick today. We pray for Brother Alvin, Lord God, that we pray that you would touch his life, you touch his body, Lord. We pray for Dole Cook, Sr. And, and Junior, Lord, that you would minister to them, Lord God, bring healing and restoration to their bodies. We pray for those that are not able to be here because of their, their ailments, oh God. I pray that you would reach down in each and every single one of their homes and that your spirit will just begin to 
circulate and move and to rise up and encourage and strengthen. Oh, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would do a great work in their lives. Father, we just love you and we thank you for the spirit that we experience in this place. Lord, Lord, I ask that you take this headache away I've been battling for the last day. Lord, that I may be able to concentrate and think. Father, may speak your word with conviction and power. Father, we just thank you and we praise you for you're the name that's above every name. And we pray in that name, the sweet name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't forget that tonight we are starting at 5 o'clock, not 6 o'clock, out in the gym, okay? Uh, we wanted to, uh, since we're just fellowshipping tonight, we want you just to be aware of that, that time change, okay? If you have your Bibles with you, turn to the book of uh, Zechariah chapter 14. I'm going to read the first five verses there. to set up uh, our message. Zechariah chapter 14, starting with verse 1. When you have it, if you will, just for a moment, stand in honor of the reading of the Word of God. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1 says, Behold, a day is coming for the Lord when the spoil taken from you will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses plundered, and the women raped. Half of the city shall go out into exile, but the rest of the people shall not be cut off from the city. And then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as when he fights on the day of battle. And on that day his foot shall stand on the Mount of Olives, that lies before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall be split into two from the east to the west by a very wide valley, so that, half, so that one half of the mountain shall move northward and the other half southward. And you shall flee to the valley of my mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach to Azel, and you shall flee as you fleed from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah." Then the Lord thy God, excuse me, then the Lord my God will come and all the holy ones with him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. I pray, Father, that you will begin to stir our hearts. And Lord, if there is someone that's under the sound of my voice today that does not have a personal relationship with you, that today they will make that surrender in their lives that they'll accept you as their Lord and Savior. So, Father, I pray that you'll encourage us. I pray that you'll strengthen our faith in you. And I pray, Father, that you would move on our behalf. In Jesus' glorious name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We're continuing our kind of our study series on who is God, having a personal uh, discovery of God in in a personal way. We've talked about throughout the last several uh, several weeks and now months about how and any time that someone had a new encounter with God, they, they associated a new name to Him. They gave a, God a new name. Not that, it, that the old name was, was useless, but it became a, a different memory or a different uh, recognition in their lives. It's kind of almost like what they used to do as shepherds when shepherds in the Bible days would, would go through battles or they would go through trials and the Lord gave them a testimony. They would make a mark on their staff and every mark remind them of the different opportunities that God came through for them and it was just a reminder that brought comfort and strength in their day-to-day walk that God had not left them, that God was still with them. And my friends, when we associate a new name to God, it brings a new memory. And so today I want us to look at a, a, a very personable name. You see, the name that I want us to understand today is the name Jehovah Elohe. Jehovah Elohe literally means the Lord my God. It points to the personal pronoun as being expressive of a personal faith in the power of God. 
or in the God of power, actually. Wherever the, this title is used, it is in the individual sense and not in a general one that we discovered several weeks ago in Jehovah Elohinu, which means the Lord our God, as that, that we experience together as a corporate body. So we've gone from a corporate body experience with God, from a personable leader declaring the Lord thy God to the Lord my God. Now it's, it, it lands in your lap. Now it comes to, to home. It comes to roost in, in your life that He is the Lord, my God. And so for the next several minutes, I want us to look at several places in the Scripture where this name is found and how it is associated with our faith in God. Because again, when we talk about Elo, uh, Jehovah Elohe, it is a personal experience, our personal faith in the God of power. How many believes that your God has power today? How many believes that your God is the all-powerful God? Because I believe that no one else can come close. He has no rival, and he has no equal. There is no one like him. And so we're going to talk about your personal faith the God of power that moves heaven and earth. He is the God that created. Uh, listen, I'm talking about your God that when it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and it was so. I'm talking about the God when He spoke you into existence. Guess what? You had to come into existence. That's power, my friends. That's power. So that's the God that we're talking about today. That's the faith. That's the kind of faith that we're talking about today. So the first thing I want to share with you about the, Je the name Jehovah Elohe, the Lord my God, is this. There is a language of our faith. So if you're taking notes, that's my first point. The language of faith. We find this in Psalms chapter 7, verse 1. The psalmist says this. He says, O oh Lord my God, in you do I take refuge. Save me from all my, per, uh, my pursuers and deliver me. You see here that when you have a relationship with God, when you have a personal relationship with God, your language changes. Do you realize that? You no longer talk about yourself. You no longer talk about your own ways and your own agenda and your own methods of doing things. But when you get saved, when you put your faith and hope and trust in Jehovah Elohe, the Lord, my God, my friends, your language changed. You see, the psalmist here says, Oh Lord, my God, in you do I take refuge. In you, oh God, you save me from all my pursuers. And you deliver me from all of those things that I need delivering from. My friends, your language has to change when you have a personal relationship with God. How many knows that if you put your hope and your trust in God, that God's going to see you through? He's going to see you through. And if He's going to see you through, you've got to change the way you talk about it. Let's just, let's just I'm, 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 I'm trying not to get on another point, but it, it just kind of, I'm, I'm going this direction right now. How many knows that if you're going to talk about the Lord your God, excuse me, the Lord my God, in your life to those around you, and you use words that can still continue to operate in fear, do you think it's going to draw them to God? Think about that. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to get through this, Sister Linda. I just, you know, the devil, I, I, there's one thing that I, I'm glad we don't do a whole lot of testimony services because y'all remember the old day? Y'all remember how everybody would get up and say, well, y'all, y'all pray for me. The devil's just been after me all this time. They gave the devil more credit for the things in their lives than they did Jesus. Come on now. Hey, you can bless his holy name. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's how their language still was operating in the flesh. But my friends, once you have an encounter with God, your language should change. It's like, it's like Job. Job. Now listen, I'm not saying that you're, 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 you're deny all of the things that are going on in your life. Listen, I get it. When you've got fever, listen, you don't feel good. 
I don't deny that there is, a, there is something manifesting in your body. Listen, I get it when, you're, when, when there's persecution taking place in your workplace and people are persecuting you because of your faith or because of your conviction. I get it. It's no fun. I understand that. But Job is a good prime example. Job didn't have everything going, on, uh, going for him at that one moment. He was. Everything was going great. His family was alive. He was full of wealth. There, there, everything was going good. It was a bright, sunshiny day. But just like it was on a bright, sunshiny day of some of your lives, he got a phone call. But it looked a little different. It was his servant running in uh, uh, and saying, Hey, Master, listen, there was a, there was a band of, of, of terrorists that came by and they took all of your livestock. They burned all of your fields. There's no more harvest left. And just one after the other kept coming up. Listen, I was out in the field and I saw a whirlwind and all the house that your kids were in. It, clum- it collapsed on them and they're all dead. There's not one survivor. I'm the only one that was left. And Job is just, he's just hearing all of this bad stuff. And the Bible tells us that he even made this comment of faith though he slay me I will still serve him why because he had a he had an encounter with Elohe Jehovah Elohe he is the Lord my God and if the Lord my God chooses literally he says the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away if the Lord chooses to give it to me, then he has the right to take it away from me. But even though he gives and he takes it away, I will follow him. And my friends, when the world sees that you're in a boat just like Job and everything's going away in your life and nothing's going in the positive for your life, if your language doesn't change, my friends, it's not going to draw people to Jesus. And if you have power, if you have faith in the power of the God you serve, our language has to change. Listen, there's times, there's especially when, when I was dealing with COVID, I, can I just be transparent with you? This preacher struggled. My faith was rocky because I'm sitting here going, oh God, I, I mean... Listen, I wasn't in bad shape like some people are in, were in bad shape, but I thought I was in bad shape. Here, I was in bad shape, and my language changed. God, I just don't know if I'm going to... Lord, where are you? God, I just... And it, it was more of a language of questioning than it was of language of faith that I was going to get through this. But when your language changes, your faith stays intact. Because though He slay me, I yet will still serve Him. And that was one thing that when I was going through my dark times of depression and anxiety, I had to keep my language in in the language of heaven. (laughs) I had to keep my language in the language of heaven. Well, pastor, how am I supposed to talk? How, How is my language supposed to be a language of faith? Get into this book right here. Get into this book and let this book speak to you. Let this book become your words. I used to, I used to roll my eyes at people that all they do is talk, and all of a sudden, before you know it, Scripture's coming out of their mouth. I'm like, come on now. Use, use your own intelligence. But you know what? That was before I grew up in the Lord. And as they started using Scripture, listen, I saw the, the fruits in their life, and I saw how that you, when you speak Scripture, the Scripture has power. The Scripture has the ability to move mountains in your life. Do you realize that? It does. Matter of fact, my wife had a family member that was talking to her one day. This was years ago, and she was, they were just talking about the goodness of God and how applying Scripture works in our lives. And they said, and I quote, well, that might work in church, but that don't work in the real world. Now, their, their opinion and their, their eyes have been opened to the reality that it's, this is not just a church world book. This is a life book. And it changes your language and the way you talk and the way you speak things. Now, I'm not talking about this name and claim it stuff. I'm talking about if you have faith in God and if you pray to God and if you believe He is the God of all power that can move heaven and earth on your behalf, then begin to speak it and let your language change. He's the Jehovah Elohe. He's the Lord my God. Secondly, the outlook of faith. We find this in Psalms chapter 18, verse 28. For it is you who light my lamp. The Lord my God lightens my darkness. Again, when you have personal relationship with God, the way you see life should change. Now how do I get to that point? Guess what? 
you got to go back to this book. Because if you don't start looking the way God looks at things, your faith in God is going to be very shallow. Very shallow. It's going to be one of those, as you see a kid, they want to go play in the water. They're, they've gone swimming, but they haven't really gone swimming. All they've gone is waiting because they're just splashing in the very shadow end. You know what it's like to go swimming when it gets to the point that your body starts floating because you can't touch under, anything underneath. Listen, that's where we live in this world. How many's ever been there that you've gone out to the deep end and you can't touch and you start panicking? I, there's been times in my life I've done that and I had a life jacket on. And I started drowning myself. Then I had to learn the lesson. My dad kept saying, son, trust the life vest. It's got you. Try, trust the life vest. And so when I started, sister, uh, 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 let me tell you something. When I started trusting into that vest, my perspective of the water changed. When you allow the word of God to get into your heart, he will change the outlook of your life. Because if you will get this in here, it will give you the correct prescriptive lenses for your eyes so that you no longer see the things through the patterns of this world, but through the pattern of the kingdom of God. And that's the kind of mindset we need. That's the kind of language we need. But that's the kind of outlook on life that we need. Yes, my friends, I look, I'm watching the same news you're watching. And I'm looking at the same Facebook articles you're watching. But my friends, let me tell you something. Number one, can't believe everything you see on Facebook. Okay? Because some of that stuff will even create fear in your spirit. It really will. I'm watching it all. I'm looking down the same school, uh, the same uh, uh, direction in your neighborhood that, I, you, that you're looking. I'm looking at the same. Can you, folks, we just got over an election and we're still looking at election stuff. It's a never ending process. I see it. I see it just like you do. But you know what? I choose to see society in this world situation according through the binoculars of God's Word. My wife will always ask. She's probably, she probably hates living with a preacher. Y'all pray for my wife. She hears sermons more than y'all hear them. She'll start talking about this situation and that situation and how we need to do this and how we need to do that. And, and I, I'm just looking at her and, and she's frustrated looking at me because she wants me to immediately agree with her. And guess what the preacher does? Thus saith the Lord. No, no I don't do it that way. But I do say, I do say, but baby, I get that. But the scripture tells us X, Y, Z. Or that the pattern of this world is, is a contrary to the Word. And this is what the pattern of the, the Word says. And it, listen, the, if I believe in Jehovah Elohei, the Lord my God, and if He is the Lord my God, then guess what? My outlook has to be different than what the world tells me. The world tells me my marriage is supposed to look like this. But let me tell you something. The Word of God tells me my marriage is supposed to look like something different than what the world wants it to look like. Not raising my kids. The world thinks that I have no say in raising my kids. But you know what the Scripture tells me? That I am the priest of my home. And I'm supposed to guide them and direct them. Are y'all hearing me today? Listen, if you're being influenced by the world, you need to get your outlook looked at. Because the way you see things has to change. When I have a relationship with the Lord my God, with Jehovah Elohe, the way that I see the world has to change. Hear me today, parents. Hear me today, grandparents. I love the public school system. I am a product of the public school system. But you have to be on your guard. You cannot let the system teach your children the world's perspective. Because they're going to create a worldview for your children. That's why the home it's the best place for teaching. I'm not talking about, I'm not proponent of, I'm not saying homeschool, I'm not saying private school. What I'm saying is you've got to do what the Word tells you to do with your children. And the, ch the Word says we are supposed to teach our children the Word of God when they get up, 
when they're sitting down to eat breakfast, when they're sitting down to eat lunch, when they're sitting down to eat dinner, when they go to bed. Listen, there, I take every opportunity to tell my kids about the Word of God. Now, I might not say, well, this is where it's found in John chapter 3, verse 16, but I'm in a situation. Matter of fact, me and my, my son went to an event yesterday. We're in an elevator, and I just simply taught to him how to respect the, 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 uh, the, the member of the opposite sex. And, and, and literally, the Scripture tells us that we're, men are supposed to treat the women as delicate, wicker vessels. And I said, listen, we've got to, we've got to respect them. We've got to treat them with honor. And, we got, and, and I did. Did I not, son? I, and I didn't say it's found in book so-and-so, verse so-and-so. But it, it is the outlook of Scripture. It's the outlook of faith because the Lord wants us to see things differently. Listen. Oh, i got to get off of this, y'all. <laughs> when an unsaved person comes through the door, guess what? We don't need to look at it the way that flesh wants us to look at it. Oh. Oh. We've got to start looking at it the way the Scripture tells us to look at it. If we... Listen, if Jesus did what we usually do when a sinner comes through the door, none of us would be saved. We've got to have an outlook that they're a lost soul. Even though they've been to the pits of hell and back, my friends, Jesus went to the pits of hell and back for them and died for them. And we have to have the same outlook of faith. If He can save you from the nastiest stuff that you were saved from, then bless God, I know He can save them from the nastiest stuff that they're in right now. You've got to change your perspective. Hallelujah. If He is Jehovah Elohei to me, I know He could be Jehovah Elohei to them. If He is the Lord my God to me, I know He can be the Lord my God to them. But we have to change the way we as the body of Christ looks at that. And the only way that that can happen is getting in the Word. Allowing the Word. I've, I've been on a journey this year. Next year I've got different... different uh, Goals for myself. Why, why do I tell you these things? Because if I'm growing, you should be growing. Right? If your preacher's growing, you should be growing. So I've just been on a simple task this year. I know many of y'all have been doing this probably for their whole life, but I have just been going from, from book to book, chapter to chapter, verse to verse, and just digesting this word. My goal is to go all the way through it in one year. That's great. Next year, I'm going to take a Bible uh, uh, book and I'm just going to dissect the mess out of it. Because I want it to get into my heart. I want it to change the way I look at life. I want it to change the way I look at every situation in my life. My friends, let this Word get into your heart so that you see things differently. It's the outlook of faith. The Lord my God has changed the outlook of of our faith number three i'm going to hurry through these there is the testimony of our faith you find this in psalms chapter 30 verse 1 and 2 he says i will extol extol you O lord for you have drawn me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me O lord my god i cry to you for help and you have healed me here the psalmist is talking about healing how he said, Lord, I cried to you, and Lord, I've, I've asked you, and you have answered me. Come on, now, how many in this place God has done something for you, and you have a testimony? I have a testimony. Why? Because the Lord my God has done some things in my life that are unique to my life, and when I get behind the pulpit, I speak from those experiences, I speak from those journeys, I speak from those pains and those heartaches and those headaches that I have overcome because of the power of the name of the Lord. And when I speak from those convictions and those testimonies, they ring true and they set people free, and the same for you. The Lord has done something powerful in your life, Teresa. I love Teresa's testimony. Y'all need to talk to Teresa about her testimony of the power of the Lord my God in her life and what has happened. Dale, you've got a testimony that God wants to use and it's powerful. We all have those testimonies. And God wants us to use them. And if He is the Lord my God, guess what? If He's the Lord my God in your life, you've got a testimony. Some of y'all have come from heartache. 
troubled marriages that have been restored. Some of y'all came from abusive marriages that, 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 that had to go through the wayside and the Lord brought a redemptive marriage into you. I, I know the Lord has brought some, some uh, issues in your children's life that you've seen them go through the pits of hell and back and yet the Lord restored them. My friends, we need to tear the testimonies of the Lord. And if He can do it for sister so-and-so, He can do it for you. And if He did it for brother so-and-so, He can do it for you. My friends, He's not a respecter of persons. Uh, if He'll do it for them, He'll do it for you. But we've got to let the testimony of our faith ring loud. Why? Because if He's the Lord my God, I want someone else to have that same experience with Him. If He's Jehovah Elohei, then let Him be Jehovah Elohei for someone else. And the only way that that can take place is through your testimony today. Share your testimony with those that you're around. Fourthly, the worship of our faith. Psalms chapter 30, verse 11 through 12 says this, For you have turned from me my mourning into dance. We sing about it all the time. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness, that my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. Oh, Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Come on now. Has God done some good stuff for you? Has He turned your mourning into dancing? Has He loosened your sackcloth and clothed you with gladness? Has He done something in your life that's caused your voice to rise up to sing His praises? I challenge you. I double dog dare you not to be silent about the goodness of God. Not to be silent of what that God has done in your life. Worship Him. Praise Him. Let it ring from the rooftop. Let there be a song in your heart. Let there be a melody in your lip. Let there be a dance in your step. Are you hearing me today? If He's the Lord, my God in your life, let the world hear it. Let it ring from the rooftop because He's good and His mercy endures forever. The world needs to hear this. The world needs to hear this message. Because, and, and it all stems because you've had a personal relationship with God. He's been so good to me. I don't know what song it is that we sing. and Maybe, maybe Pastor Jonathan can tell us right off the top of his head. But we sing a song and we talk about how He healed my heart. And I know it's talking about, you know, from sin. But when I get to that line, something just kind of wells up inside me. Because if you've ever experienced your heart doing something that it wasn't designed to do, it puts fear in your heart. It put fear in your life. There's been many times I looked at my life like my, li my wife thinking this is the last time I'm going to see my wife because my heart's about to do something weird. Listen, he's healed my heart. He's done things in my body that medicine couldn't do only because He's the only one that could do it. And He did it. And I have to sing about it. I have to shout about it. I have to clap my hands about it. Why? Because when I have a relationship with Jehovah Elohei, the Lord my God, that my worship goes to a whole nother level. Why? Because I believe in the power that my God holds and possesses in His life and that He is powerful and able to do anything that I need Him to do because that is the kind of God we have today. Worship Him. The worship our faith. The, fifthly, the consecration of our faith. I love this. I love the book of Joshua. I'm hurrying, folks. I've, I've heard about the conversations between Pastor Jonathan's time frame of preaching and my time of preaching. Fine. I've heard about it. I know it's going around. I'm working on it. I just got more years under him than he does. Joshua chapter 14, verse 7 and 8. It's a powerful book. But this is what the Scripture talking. This is Caleb talking. He says, I was 40 years old. I'm almost there. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought him... Word again as it was in my heart. But my brothers who went with me made the heart of the people melt, yet I wholeheartedly followed the Lord my God. 
Caleb went in there. Him and Joshua, they were looking at the situation that they were spying out. They were looking at a land that was bigger than them. It was mightier than them. It was more powerful than them. But yet on the same side, there was some milk. It was a land flowing of milk and honey. It was a milk that was, uh, it was a land that was good for their lives, their livelihoods, their livestock, for their families. And my friends, they saw this and they knew that it was good. They wanted it so bad. But the other ten of the spies, they said, there's no way we can do this. There's no way that we can overcome them. We are grasshoppers in our own eyes compared to them. And yet Caleb and Joshua said, you know what? If God be for us, then who can be against us? And if God says that land belongs to us, Guys, I believe we can get every we can get out there with a little little spitball and, and, and we can take this place on because God has already given it to us. And Caleb is now getting ready to inherit his own possession. Him and Joshua are the only ones of that generation that's going to inherit that possession. And he said, he says, my brothers who went with me, they made the heart of the people melt, but I wholeheartedly followed the Lord my God. Listen, if God has told you it's going to be so, then consecrate your faith in Him. And said, if God says it's going to happen, then I can take it to the bank. If God told me that the promise of the Lord is yes and amen in my life, then I can take it to the bank. And if I can take it to the bank... I'm going to consecrate myself. I'm going to put my, my, my wagon on his hitch. And wherever he goes, I go. If it's up in the mountain, I'm going with him in the mountain. And if i got to go to the valley to get to where I'm going, buddy, as long as my hitch is hitched to him, I'm going to the valley. But I'm going to consecrate myself with him. I'm going to put myself wholeheartedly in his camp. Because if I'm on his team and he's on my team, I know I'm going to be okay. I know I'm going to be okay. Why? Because He's the Lord my God. I know He's the Lord my God. You see, listen, Thomas E. Hodges is my father. He is my earthly father. And I know wherever my dad would go, he would not take me anywhere that we couldn't make it out of. I just trusted him. He was my dad. I knew he could overcome these obstacles in my life for me because I'm his son and he's my dad. My friends, you've got a heavenly father that knows what's best for you. That's why the psalmist says, this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. My friends, rejoice in the day that you have. Consecrate yourself to God just like Caleb did. Just consecrate yourself and wholeheartedly follow Him. Number six. Sister Joanne, if you'll come to the piano. I'm getting close to wrapping this thing up. There's the stay of faith. The stay of faith. Ezra chapter 7, verse 27 and 28. It says, Blessed be the Lord, the God of our fathers, who put such a thing as this into the hearts of the King, the beautify, uh, to beautify the house of the Lord that is in Jerusalem, and who extended to me his steadfast love before the king and his counselors and before all the king's mighty officer. I took courage. Listen to this. He said, I took courage for the hand of the Lord my God was upon me, and I gathered leading men from Israel to go up with me. You see, the Old Testament often describes Jehovah's hand as his power. Ezra took courage. Ezra took courage in a statement that took place or in an event that took place. He says, I took courage because the hand of God's power was upon me. In the midst of the Lord my God's power, there is staying ability that causes us to fasten upon Him. My friends, if you can do, the Scripture tells us in, in the New Testament, do everything that you can do, and when you've done everything that you can do, stand. Stand firm. Y'all remember that old song that says, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. Listen, that's the staying power of faith in a God that has you. I don't know about you, but I want the hand of the Lord on my life. I want the, the, the hand of the Lord on my life. And when the hand of the Lord is on my life, I know that no matter what comes my way, I'm going to be sure. It's like that old kid's song. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. 
Then you go on, and the rains came down, and the floods came up, and when the waters came around, the house went splat. Y'all remember the song? Then at the flip side of the coin came, the wise men built his house upon the rock. The rains, same rains came down, the same winds came around, the same waves came up, and the house on the rock stood firm. It was stayed. My friends, I don't know about you, but I want to put my hope and my trust in Jesus. I want to put my hope and my trust in Jesus. And when my hope and my trust is in Jesus, guess what? My faith is stayed. There's a hand of power in my life. And finally, number seven, the hope of faith. We see this in our text, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 5. And you shall flee to the valley of my mountains. For the valley of the mountains shall reach to Azel. And you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come and all the holy ones with him. Listen, I don't have time to break this scripture down the way it needs to be broke down. But this is a prophetic end time scripture. This is talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Do you realize there's coming a day that Jesus' foot is going to land back on this ground and it's going to happen on Mount, Zion, uh, Mount uh, the Mount of Olives? And when it happens on the Mount of Olives, it is going to split that mountain in half. Part of the mountain is going to go to the north side. Part of the mountain is going to go to the south side. That's what the Scripture is talking about. And when He comes, He's going to bring a host with Him. You see, if He's the Lord my God, then I have something to hope for. I have something to hope for. Do you realize that if your heart and life is in Jesus Christ today, you will be on the front row of Zechariah chapter 14, verse 5. You will be one of the front row participants. As a matter of fact, you won't have to lift your finger for Jesus is going to do all the work. Matter of fact, I don't know if the Scripture tells us this, but i got a feeling we're all going to have a bucket of popcorn because that's all we're going to be doing. We're going to be watching the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords do His work, and He's going to come back on this earth, and He's going to, he is going to take the devil, and He's going to put him in His rightful place. My friends, if you're hoping and trust is in Jesus, we're going to be called out of here. And when we're called out of here, we're going to meet Him in the air and we'll be there with Him forever and ever. And there's coming a day that He's coming back on this earth and He is going to split this earth wide open. My friends, you have a hope today. We have a hope that the power of Jesus will one day and is still conquering all the forces of darkness on this earth and establish His eternal reign forever and forever. My friends, those of us who put our hope in Jesus will return with Him in this event with victory. If He's the Lord, your God, if He is the Lord, my God, if He is Jehovah Elohim. You have a hope today that you will reign in victory with Him. It's the greatest thing in the world, my friends, to know that once you pass from this life, there's something on the other side. It's the greatest hope that you can ever have. You know, before the season of COVID, I used to be very kind of anxious and weary and, and, and fearful of death. But you know what? There's been this settling hope that has come over my life is we just buried yesterday a, a fellow pastor 43 years of age that's four years from where I'm going to be I'm four years from that right now I'm 39 Stephanie just turned 40 I mean that's 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 getting, getting a little close to home 43 years old COVID took him out a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ a powerful preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But you know what? I'm not necessarily that worried about it anymore, Dale. Why? Because there's this hope. There's this hope, Brother Ron, that it's just kind of settled in my heart. That the moment I take my last breath and my heart beats his last beat, that I'm going to be instantly transmitted into the presence of God. 
There's no, ooh, there's no pain. There's no sorrow. There's no fear. It's going to be a land flowing with milk and honey, Sister Linda. It's going to be a place where our loved ones have already gone on. But more importantly, it's going to be the place that your Savior is going to be standing there greeting you with peace and joy. And the Bible tells me He's going to wipe away every tear. There's a hope we've got. Why? Because He's the Lord my God. And since He's the Lord my God, there's a hope. There's a hope. There's a hope. Why is it a hope? It's because it hasn't quite come yet. Oh, but I can see it on the radar. I can see it on the horizon. I can see it on the horizon. My friends, hear me today. We got to get our hearts ready. We got to get our hearts ready because we don't know the day nor the hour that Jesus' return will come. And if his if his return is stayed, then there's going to come a day where your number is going to be called up and you're going to go through the ways of death. We don't know when it's going to happen. We've buried a 90-year-old somebody this year and we've buried a 40-something-year-old somebody this year. Death doesn't care about how old you are. Death don't care if you've been living for the Lord or not. It's coming. The Bible, I don't know why I've got to preach this, but the Bible says that it's appointed that all men shall die. We're all going to get it. It's it's coming whether you want it or not. And when it comes your way, are you going to be able to say, He was the Lord my God? He was the Lord my God. Listen, you can't stand before God and say, "He He was the God of my family. He was the God of my mama, and He was the God of my daddy. He was the God of my grandma. He was the God of my grandpa. You can't stand. He's going to say, what did you do with this? Was He the Lord your God? Was He the Lord my God? My friends, you've got to make that commitment today. Will you stand with me all across this auditorium? This pastor does it every Sunday. I put it all out on the field, my friends. I put my, my, all my blood, sweat, and guts out on the field for this. Are you here today and you don't, you're not living for the Lord? You're far away from the Lord. And you need to make Him your Lord, your God. You need to make Him a personal God today. If that's you and say, Pastor Matt, I want to live for God. I want Him to be the Lord, my God. Will you just slip your hand right up and right back down and say, Pastor, pray for me. I need Jesus to be the Lord of my life. Is there anybody in this house? Come on now. If you was to die today and you stand before the Lord, would you be able to say, Lord, you were my God and I served you. Can you say that without a a shadow of a doubt in your life? If not, today's your day. If you're watching online, it's today's your day. Just make that declaration. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us this, that he who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All you have to do is call upon him. So that's what we're going to do. Church, will you bow your heads and let's just call upon the name of the Lord. Father. We need you in our lives. We have failures. We have faults. We're not perfect people. Matter of fact, the curse of sin calls us all the time. Many times we answer that call. There's imperfections and there's sin. Lord, we need you to forgive us. We need you to forgive us of our sins. Father, we will follow you all the days of our lives. Lord, we will make you our God. We will follow you. We will worship you. We will testify to you. You will be our hope. You will be our trust. So, Father, I pray that you would change our hearts and change our lives. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. My friends, if you prayed a prayer like that and you called on the name of the Lord, the Lord will come in and he will change your life. Follow Him. Get into His Word. But if you're here today and you've already made the Lord the Lord of your life, He is your Lord, my God. I want you to take time and I want you to come to this altar 
and I want you to love on him. Maybe there's some areas that I was talking about that you need to up your faith in. Maybe it's in worship. Maybe it's in your testimony. Maybe it is full consecration unto him. I don't know. Maybe it's the language or the outlook of faith. But whatever it is, I want us to come to this altar and I want us to let the Holy Spirit begin to move in our lives and to help us to be the best followers of Jesus that we can be. Will you step out right now as Pastor Jonathan is singing and I want you to come and let's get alone with the Lord this morning. Come on. We worship you, oh God. There's a grace where the heart is under fire Another way when the world is closing in The Lord, my God. When I look at the space between where I used to be this reckoning I know I will never be alone there was another in the fire standing next to me there was another in the waters holding back the seas should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free there is a cross that bears the burden where another died for me. There is another in the fire. Oh, there is another in the fire. Oh, oh, my death and the death and sin anymore but should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning either way I won't bow to the things of this world and I know I will never be alone there's another in the fire Another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding what power set me free? There is a grave that holds nobody. Now that power lives in me. Cause there's another in the fire. Whoa. Darkness bows to him. I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between where stand. I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in. Cause nothing stands between us. No, nothing stands between us. the name but the name that is Jesus he who was and still is and will be through it all so come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning I know I will never be There'll be another in the fire Standing next to me There'll be another in the world You're not alone, you're not alone Holding back the sea And should I ever need reminding Of how good you've been to me I'll count the joy of every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be yeah, I can God. see the light And I can see the light In the 
the darkness, as the darkness bows to him, yes. I can hear the roar in the heavens, as, as the space between where sin, I can feel the ground shaking beneath us, as the prison walls came in, cause nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between us. There'll be another in the fire standing next to me. There'll be another in the waters holding back the sea. Should I ever need reminding how good you've been to me? I count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be That's that stay of faith that we talked about stay of faith no matter what the battle is there's joy in it because I know that's where he's at with me Father God I thank you for this day thank you for your word I pray that it goes and does not return unto you void but accomplishes every task that your word was sent out to do Father I pray that you would touch your people be with your people Bless your people, I pray. Let your anointing rest upon their lives. Let the hand of God be upon their lives, I pray. Give them rest this afternoon. Bring us back safe and sound tonight that we can fellowship with one another and just have a great time in your presence and with our family of God. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this day, and we continue to give you this day in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Glad to see you in the house of the Lord. We'll see you again tonight at 5 o'clock.